Good morning and welcome to ILT Chapel. I'm Pastor Mark Jamison. Our sermon today is going to be a little different. Each year I try to preach one section of a small catechism. This gives us the language of faith that we can share with others. It's, it gives us a witness to Jesus Christ and the gospel and that's why I consider it important to preach on each section of the catechism. Today I'm going to do a, a sermon on the second article on redemption. Uh, I'm going to read Martin Luther's explanation to the second article as he stated in the small catechism. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father in eternity, and also true human being, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person. He has purchased and freed me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. He has done all this in order that I may belong to him, live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in eternal righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from the dead and lives and rules in eternally. eternity. This is most certainly true. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For those of you who are old enough, do you remember the day President Ronald Reagan took office for the first time? I do. January 20th, 1981. <laughs> Why has that day stuck in my memory? Well, for one, I had a root canal done that day at my dentist's office. I always remember the days I have a root canal done. It's something you don't forget. But even more important, it was the day the American hostages were released from captivity in Iran. I will never forget the look on their faces that day. Tears of joy and relief. Lots of smiles and hugs and kisses with loved ones. It was a great example of a transfer of power. The hostages were transferred from the power of their captor, Iran, to being under the power and protection of the United States again. And there was a second transfer of power that day. The power of the presidency was transferred from Jimmy Carter to Ronald Reagan. A transfer of power. That's a helpful image to describe the work of Jesus Christ. He has transferred you, my friends, from the powers of sin, death, and the devil into Christ's eternal kingdom. He had to do the transfer. We can't do that ourselves. Just like the hostages couldn't set themselves free. If we could free ourselves, Jesus wouldn't have been sent by God as a Savior. He wouldn't have had to die on a cross. That's why Martin Luther said you could boil down the second article of the Apostles' Creed to just one phrase. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Redeemer, Luther said. Lord and Redeemer. <laughs> now, those are not very modern words. But sometimes they're used. Like lording it over someone. Someone lords it over us when they push us, push us around with their power. And what do you think of when you hear the word redemption? It's usually It usually means someone does something bad. But then... They make up for it by doing something good. And that is their redemption. But Lord and Redeemer mean something else when it comes to Christ Jesus. He isn't Lord because he abuses his power. He isn't a Redeemer because he made up for something bad that he did. No, he is Lord and Redeemer because he has released us from sin, death, and the power of the devil 
and all the misery the devil brings us. It's the transfer of power. For apart from Christ, we are captive to these powers. We forget. The wages of sin is death, the Bible says. Death is God's judgment against sin. Apart from Christ, then, we have no hope of making it to heaven. We are bound for hell. We stand before God, as Luther says, lost and condemned creatures. Now, as Americans, we don't really understand being captive to anyone, do we? We don't have a lord or king. Thankfully, we can vote a president and the president's party out of office every four years. That's all true and good. But what about the power of alcohol and drugs? What about the power of other addictions like gambling, credit cards, sex? People also get overpowered by hate anger, resentment, jealousy, and greed. A guy walks into the post office one day. He sees a middle-aged bald man who is standing at the counter. There the bald guy is placing love stamps on bright pink envelopes with hearts all over them. He then takes out a perfume bottle and starts spraying scent all over the envelopes. Curiosity gets the best of the first guy. He goes up to the bald man and asks, What are you doing there, mister? The bald guy says, Oh, yeah, I'm sending out 1,000 Valentine's Day cards. Signed, Guess Who? But why? asked the other man. Because I'm a divorce lawyer, the bald guy replies. I'm drumming up business for myself. Yes, there's lots of things that overpower people, especially greed. What about peer pressure for our kids? Parents are worried their kids will get in the wrong crowd. And then there's the power of violence in video games and all over the media. Some suggest there's a connection between that violence and school shooting. Maybe, then, the language of being under someone's power is more familiar than we think. Maybe, too, the idea of a transfer of power does make sense. For if Christ hadn't transferred you, my friends, under his power, you wouldn't have faith or pray. You wouldn't love and forgive your neighbor. You live under the rule of Christ in your lives. You live under his power and influence. You don't want it any other way. By Christ's power alone you are redeemed. Now, he didn't use a credit card for your redemption. No, he purchased and freed you with his holy precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. The godly one took the place of the ungodly on the cross and God raised Jesus from the dead because of that. Now, for Jesus' sake, dear friends, you are forgiven. You have been made spotless and clean in the sight of God by Jesus shedding his blood for you. It's the transfer of power. You have been transferred into God's eternal kingdom. You are his, and he is yours. Christ's power rules over you and in you. My friends, even to say that is not so strange after all. For love captures our hearts, doesn't it? At least, that's what we say on Valentine's Day. When we fall in love, we say our sweetheart is captivating. Their love has taken over our hearts. We can't help but love them. So it is with the love of Christ Jesus for you. When his love takes a hold of you, you look at your neighbors in a different way. You can't help but love them. Joyce was cleaning out the pockets of her six-year-old 
Megan's winter coat. Joyce found a pair of mittens in each pocket, thinking one pair must not have been enough to keep her hands warm. The mother asked her little girl, Megan, why are you carrying two pairs of mittens in your coat? Megan replied, Oh, Mom, I've been doing that a long time. You see, some kids come to school without mittens. And if I carry another pair, I can share them. Then their hands won't get cold. There was a transfer of power in Megan by Christ. And he is doing the same in you, dear friends. Amen. Until we meet again, may God bless you and keep you in his love.